This is the third video in a series of videos that I'm making on the works of Apollonius, uh, particularly the, the treatise on conic sections. In the last video, I covered Apollonius's classification of the different conic sections into circle, ellipse, hyperbola, and parabola. And immediately following this, Apollonius introduces the idea of a, a conjugate diameter. So this is where we're going to be starting with this video. Um, in this video, I'm going to get through most of uh, book one. So by the end of this, this video, we should be nearing the end of Apollonius' first book, although we won't quite get to the, the end of it. But let's get started. So just let me explain these diagrams that are on the board behind me. Uh, the first diagram here is uh, an ellipse, and the second is a hyperbola with two branches. Um, even though this is an ellipse, I'm not excluding the possibility that it might actually be a circle, that it could represent a circle. We're not interested in parabola here, we're just interested in the, the so-called uh, central conic section, so namely uh, circles, ellipses, and the, the hyperbola. Uh, in each case, we've got PP primed, which is a transverse diameter. So I mentioned transverse diameters in the, the previous video, in video number two. Um, I just want to make a, a point here that uh, regarding the, the, the transverse diameter, sometimes we might say the diameter PP primed, which is referring really to the whole thing. So the uh, PP primed extended indefinitely in, in both directions. Obviously in the case of the ellipse, there's not really much point in doing that because there are no chords outside of the ellipse for it to bisect. But in the case of the, the hyperbola, uh, it definitely makes sense to, to do that because the, the chords that it bisects are in here and in, in here. When we talk about the transverse diameter PP primed, we're talking about really this finite section. So in the case of the ellipse, it's this bit on the interior of the ellipse, and in the case of the hyperbola, it's this bit that's in between the two uh, branches uh, of the hyperbola. Okay. I'm going to use PL as well to represent the parameter corresponding to uh, the diameter PP primed in both cases. Something that I didn't quite make clear in uh, video number two, which I think I should have emphasised a little bit more, is that uh, the parameter of a section is very much dependent on the, the diameter that we choose. So changing from one diameter to another is, is going to change the, the parameter potentially. So we can't talk about the parameter of a section, but we can talk about the parameter of a section uh, in relation to a particular diameter that we've chosen. So coming back to these diagrams, uh, the red lines here are, in both uh, cases, are the chords that are bisected by uh, PP primed, the diameter PP primed. And the blue chords are uh, chords that are parallel to PP primed. And then what I've done is I've drawn a line, DD primed, that is parallel to those red chords. Remember, these red chords are bisected by PP primed. Um, so a line parallel to those red chords that goes through the center, the midpoint, should I say, of PP primed. So uh, DD primed is going to bisect PP primed at this point C. Okay? And what we uh, what we get the result that we get i'm not going to prove it here uh, but the result we get is that dd primed the line dd prime will bisect this uh, series of uh, blue chords okay so that means that dd prime is actually a, a diameter a diameter is a, a line that bisects a, a family of uh, of chords of the the section well that's what we're seeing here and there's a very close relationship between DD primed and PP primed, uh, namely that DD primed bisects all of the chords parallel to PP primed, the transverse diameter, and PP primed bisects all of the chords parallel to DD primed. So we call DD primed the conjugate diameter to PP primed. Okay, so as uh, as I kind of mentioned before with um, the diameter PP prime, DD prime is really the, the whole thing that we're talking about. In the case of the ellipse, it doesn't really make sense to extend DD prime beyond 
the um, the circumference really of the ellipse because there are no cords there for it to bisect but in the case of the hyperbola that's definitely uh, going to be necessary because all of our cords uh, which um, join two points on um, uh, opposite branches of the hyperbola in this case uh, will kind of go all the way up here and all the way down here so we're going to need to extend it indefinitely. In the case of the ellipse uh, there's also a relationship between the length dd primed and the length pp primed namely that uh, the length dd primed is a mean proportional between pp primed and the parameter pl so what we get is in the case of the ellipse at least that pp primed the ratio of pp primed to d d primed is equal to d d primed to p l i can write this also as d d primed squared is equal to p l times p p primed so i went through briefly the idea of a, a mean proportional at the end of the first video okay in the case of the the hyperbola uh, d d primed is not a finite thing there's no kind of sensible uh, no obvious places really to, to cut d d primed off but we can we can do so we can cut d d primed so that it too the length of, of d d primed is also going to be a mean proportional between the length p p primed and the parameter in this case of the, the hyperbola. So not only can we make this apply to the ellipse, we can also make it apply to the hyperbola as well. So the, uh, the length dd primed, uh, the finite section dd primed, is um, a mean proportional between the length of the transverse diameter and the, the parameter of the section. In the case of the ellipse, the length dd prime is the significance of the length dd prime is quite obvious. It's uh, the d and d prime are the points where the conjugate diameter um, intersects with the uh, with the section, the ellipse that is uh, is our section in that case. In the case of the hyperbola, it's not quite so obvious what the significance of that length dd prime is, but it does have some significance, uh, namely that for every Parabola uh, for every hyperbola, sorry, with two branches, there is a conjugate hyperbola. So a conjugate hyperbola is going to be kind of in here, somewhere. So that the two, it turns out that they share asymptotes. Uh, that's not a sufficient condition, although it's a necessary condition that they they've kind of got the same asymptotes. Well, it turns out that this uh, conjugate diameter dd prime the whole thing is actually a diameter of this conjugate hyperbola and not only that uh, d d prime they're the points of intersection of that conjugate diameter with the conjugate hyperbola so we've got a kind of duality here between not only the diameters but also between the uh the hyperbole this this hyperbola and its and its conjugate so it naturally kind of follows that if this is a transverse diameter of the conjugate uh, hyperbola that pp primed would actually be a conjugate um, uh, diameter of the conjugate uh, hyperbola so there's a very clear relationship here going on between them uh, also something that I, I, I need to mention is that the uh, the length the finite section of dd primed so not the whole thing not not dd primed the whole conjugate diameter but just between d and d primed that's called a secondary diameter okay and from this relationship here uh, we can say that the ratio of d d primed squared to p p primed squared so in other words the ratio of the the length of the secondary diameter to the length of the transverse diameter, sorry, the square of the, the length of the uh, secondary diameter to the square of the length of the transverse diameter is equal to PL times PP primed to PP primed squared. Because these two are equal, so this follows from Euclid somewhere, I can't remember exactly which uh, proposition it is, but 
because these two are equal by what we've got here, then the ratio of each of these two, the same thing is going to be, is going to be equal. Okay. So I can do a little bit of cancelling over here uh, to get that uh, the ratio of dd prime squared to pp prime squared is actually equal to uh, p uh, l to p p primed. So that simplifies the the, the ratio a little bit, uh, but also I can uh, I can have dd prime and pp primed. Okay, if I want to, and I get that C D squared to C P squared is equal to the ratio of P L to P P primed, because D D primed and P P primed are bisected; they mutually bisect one another at this this point C. Okay, going back to something what came up in the uh, last video, video number two, is that for both the ellipse and the um, hyperbola that qv squared, uh, the ratio of qv squared to pv times p primed v is equal to the ratio of pl to pp primed. So this was something that I, I went through in the, the last video. Well, as you can see then, that means that this CD squared, the ratio of CD squared to CP squared uh, is going to be equal to this as well. So we've got equalities all the way around here. So this is, uh, you, can, you can see now how the, the theory is really starting to develop and all of these, these different lengths um, of lines and different, the parameter, the transverse diameters, they're all kind of mixing up now. Uh, and these relationships that start, are starting to emerge between them and it's these relationships that uh, Apollonius really takes advantage of uh, in, in his work in some of the, the propositions that I'm going to be going on to prove very shortly things like this are going to be extremely useful to us so I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to move on to the next part of, the, uh, of this uh, particular book Okay, so new proposition, new diagram, uh, what's going on here? Uh, we've got our ellipse here and PP primed is a um, transverse diameter and QV is drawn ordinate wise and then we've drawn the tangent to the point Q and that intersects uh, PP prime produced in, in T. Okay, so it's a fairly basic kind of setup. We've got C as well, which is the midpoint of PP prime, or the, the center of the ellipse. Actually, what I'm going to be going through here applies equally well to circles and uh, hyperbole. Uh, I'm just going to go through it for the ellipse. It's basically exactly the same argument for circles and, and the hyperbola as well. Parabola, this doesn't apply to. Again, we're just interested in uh, conic set in, in uh, the central conic sections, so ellipse, uh, circle, hyperbola. What are we wanting to prove here? We're wanting to prove what we've got written up here. So in the first uh, first part of the, the proposition, we want to prove that the rectangle contained by the line segments CV and CT is equal to the square on uh, CP. Okay, And in the second part, we want to show that the square on the ordinate QV, uh, the ratio of the square on the ordinate to uh, the rectangle contained by CV and CT is equal to the ratio of the parameter PL to uh, the length of the transverse diameter, which as we've seen um, in the, the first part of this video, that that is actually equal to, uh, to this. So this second part here, we don't actually, we've already proved that. We've already shown that. It's really this, uh, this part here that we're wanting to, to show. So I'm going to start off with uh, the first part here. And this is going to require me to uh, assume a result from um, earlier in, in the book. Okay, so this is proposition 14 in, in Heath's book. Uh, which corresponds to its book one, proposition 37, 
and 39, I think, in Apollonius's uh, original work. So it's Proposition 14 in Heath's book. Um, we're, I want to assume what, what has been proved in Proposition 13 in Heath's book. So I'm not going to uh, prove this. We're going to assume this, uh, this equality of ratios um, is, is valid. Uh, namely that if TQ is actually a tangent to this ellipse, then TP to uh, TP prime, the ratio of TP to TP prime is equal to the ratio of PV to P prime V. Okay, so we're going to assume that without, without proof for the time being. And I'm also going to write it again over here, but just um, the other way around. So TP prime to TP is equal to P prime V to PV. So this is, uh, I don't know, maybe invertando those uh, rules of manipulation that I went through at the end of the first video. It's, it's one of those. So I've just switched the, um, the, the, the two parts of each ratio around uh, so that antecedent um, becomes consequent and, and vice versa. So then we're going to use uh, componendo here to get that TP plus TP primed to TP primed is equal to PV plus P primed V to P primed V. Okay. And TP plus TP primed is equal to 2TC or 2CT. Uh, and to TP primed, and that's equal to PV plus P primed V is just PP primed, but with C being the midpoint, I can say it's 2CP uh, to P primed V. And therefore, 2TC to 2CP is equal to TP primed to P prime V. So again, using those rules that I went through at the end of the first video, uh, I can switch these two, uh, two around. So the consequent of the first ratio and the antecedent of the second ratio, I can switch around. Uh, and what I end up with is, is this thing here. Okay, so moving on to, to this, it is the same ratio as this, just kind of upside down, so to speak. <coughs> so here I'm going to use uh, convertendo uh, to give that TP primed to TP primed minus TP is equal to uh, P primed V to P prime V minus P V. Okay. And therefore, T P primed minus T P is just P P primed. Okay, so this whole length here, T P primed, minus that little bit there, is just equal to P P primed, which again is uh, 2 C P. P prime V doesn't change, but this thing P prime V minus P V. So, okay, I'll do this just as a little separate calculation. So if we've got P prime V minus P V, this is equal to, well, P prime V is P prime C plus C V. Uh, but P prime C is equal to P C. Uh, plus C V minus P V. <clears throat> but P C minus P V is equal to V C or C V. So this thing here is equal to 2 C V. So therefore, um, I can switch these two around just like I did over here. So I get T P primed to 
P prime V equals uh, 2 CP to 2 C V. So therefore, since this is equal to uh, T P prime to P prime V, and this is also equal to T P prime to uh, P prime V, therefore we get that 2 T C to 2 C P is equal to 2 C P to 2 C V. I can cancel the 2's, they don't really serve any purpose, they don't uh, affect the ratios in any way. So what we're left with <coughs> is that T C, the ratio of T C to C P is equal to C P to C V. So this is, this, that means that C P is a mean proportional between T C and C V. Okay? And it follows from that that C P squared is equal to what do we want C V times C T. So we've got the C V, okay, T C, C T, exactly the same thing, and that's the result that we're after. So that proves the first part of this of this theorem, uh, that CP squared is equal to CV times CT. So what's the point of this? Well, really it gives another relationship that we can draw on to then prove some more interesting things further down the line. So in the first video I said that uh, the first part of Apollonius's work, particularly the first four books, is really uh, the basic kind of theory, uh, just getting things going, uh, the, the fundamental properties of uh, the sections the conic sections that allow it then to move on to the more interesting kind of stuff. So this is one of the properties of uh, conic sections that we, we really need to make use of. Um, arguably, uh, it could be the case here that uh, TP primed minus TP actually turns out to be negative. That is a possibility. But it's a fairly easy situation to deal with. For example, if Q was further around here, maybe over this side of the ellipse, then the tangent would be uh, over here. And we'd get that TP primed is actually uh, shorter in length than uh, TP. But these, these things are easy to deal with, so I've taken this particular diagram here as fairly representative of what we're uh, actually dealing with, that, the, that Q is actually here and the tangent is um, situated in this kind of way. Uh, if it happens that the, the tangent was further around here, it's a fairly easy manipulation, uh, a fairly easy modification to make to this uh, over here to deal with that. Um, the reason why it might be such a problem for TP prime minus TP to be negative is because um, we don't deal with negative magnitudes. Um, in Apollonius's work, or indeed in, in Greek mathematic, Greek geometry in general, um, negative magnitudes don't exist. And they've got to be avoided, really. So we, we can only take uh, a smaller part from a larger part. We can't invent these negative numbers at this stage. But that's that's the only real snag, really, with, with this. Uh, again, going back to what I said in the first video about um, maybe uh, Apollonius seeing particular situations as separate cases, whereas now we might see them as the same thing, this is probably one of those cases. We wouldn't bat an eyelid really to, uh, to introduce a negative uh, quantity or negative magnitude anyway, it, it wouldn't bother us. Um, but to ancient Greeks this, was a, this would have been a, a problem, it would, it would have been unimaginable really to, to deal with negative magnitudes. So that's the first part of this, this theorem, this proposition. So I'm going to move now on to the second part. So let's move on now to the second part of this proposition. Uh, it follows on fairly um, easily really from the, the, the first, first part of the, the proposition. Uh, what you'll notice as we go through this is that it's very similar in the sense that it's manipulation of ratio and proportions. Uh, and that's the main theme throughout a, a lot of Apollonius's work. And not only Apollonius, but other Greek geomet uh, geometers as well, Archimedes and Euclid. Uh, manipulation of ratio and proportions is, is kind of a fundamental core 
concept and technique that is used over and over again in a whole range of different situations. So just like in modern geometry and mathematics, algebraic manipulation, manipulation of algebraic equations is uh, something that's just done really, uh, it's taken for granted and um, we just do it without really thinking about it. So possibly at the, at the time of, of Euclid, Archimedes, um, and other Greek geometers, it, it, they had the same kind of attitude when it came to manipulation of, of ratio and proportions, that it was just something that they had to do to get the results that they, they needed. Um, the, some of the propositions that I'm going to be going through further down the line are going to involve some other techniques, so not everything that I do is purely going to be uh, ratio and proportion. There are going to be some other techniques that I'm going to go through uh, in, in some of the later propositions. But let's uh, start off with the proof of part two by going back to the results of, of part one. Um, and in particular, I'm going to write this equality. I'm going to go back to a ratio and write it as CP. The ratio of CP to CV is equal to uh, CT to CP. Okay. So remember CP is a, a mean proportional between CV and CT, so um, I've kind of written this uh, a different way around to what I might normally write it uh, to emphasise that it's a mean proportional, but this is, uh, this is a valid way of, of writing the, the, the ratios. So then uh, I'm going to do CP uh, minus CV to CV is equal to CT minus CP to CP. Okay, so this is kind of, uh, uh, what is it? This is separando on the ratio. And CP minus CV is just equal to uh, PV. So the ratio of PV to CV is equal to CT minus CP. So that's just going to be uh, PT to C, P. Rearrange the, the ratio to give P, V to P, T is equal to C, V to C, P. And then use, it's kind of a componendo, but rather than it being on the, the antecedents, uh, replacing the antecedent with the sum, I'm going to replace the consequence uh, with the sums. So I get P, V uh, to P, V plus P, T is equal to CV to CV plus CP. Okay, so PV plus PT is just going to be equal to VT is equal to CV, ratio of CV, CV plus uh, CP. Well, if I think of CP as uh, being equal to CP primed, then CV plus CP is just equal to CV plus CP primed. So this, that's going to be uh, P primed V. Okay, and I can rearrange this now to, do I need to rearrange it? No, I can say that from this, uh, CV times VT is equal to uh, PV times P primed V. Okay, so just multiplying uh, antecedent consequent here and uh, antecedent and consequent here. Multiply the two together, they're equal. So it, it, think about these as kind of fractions really. Numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator. Uh, and this kind of, this pops out. So we know that uh, this PV times P primed V has uh, a particular relationship to uh, the square on the ordinates. Um, so going back to the, the second video that I made, we know that, uh, for example, QV squared, the ratio of QV squared to uh, PV times P primed V is equal to the ratio of the parameter PL to PP primed. So therefore, if these two are equal, 
then their ratio to QV squared is going to be equal. So this is equal to the ratio of QV squared to CV times VT and that of course is still equal to PL the ratio of PL to PP primed which is what we needed and of course we showed earlier that uh, the ratio of PL to PP primed is equal to the ratio of the square of uh, CD to the square of, of CP so these are the uh, kind of um, half of the conjugate diameter and half the um, transverse diameter so I didn't draw the, the, the conjugate diameter in but it would be um, maybe like this so it's going to be parallel to, to QV uh, and that's D, D primed for example uh, so and that's that's the proof of the, the proposition so as you can see it's really just manipulation of these ratios and uh, ratio and proportions so let, I'm going to move now onto the uh, onto the next proposition.